Great, welcome back to building a space elevator again. So as you can tell, my voice is kind of came back, but not really. But I owe you guys some context from the last one and for this one. So let's get started. All right, so let's talk about last episode first, which was episode 12 of the time lapse series. And that was building the impractical welding machine or ship, which initially had a rotor in the front with some piping that does kind of like a claw looking like thing or a, a crab claw kind of situation or lobster claw, whatever you want to call it. And the idea was for it to go in between the poles and start welding it up. It actually didn't turn out exactly what I was thinking of doing, but it worked out okay. And the claw piece was supposed to rotate 90 degrees so it gets the horizontal poles from here. So we can weld it from horizontal left and right or right to left. And then we rotate it 90 degrees and go up and down to make sure we get all the welded pieces done there. But unfortunately, it was just a little more difficult to have it to actually aim in between it because it was only one block wide towards the tip of the claw, which really, really didn't make a lot of sense, <laughs> which is why we called it impractical welder until we broke it. So we broke it by hitting a tree and then we kind of just knocked the whole welding system down to the ground and broke it. So I just I ended up adding three welders up front like this, which is pretty close to the cockpit. So it's a little hard to aim. Uh, but yeah, this was the most impractical welding ship that we made so far. And the large thrusters on the top there, it, it's a little too fast versus all the other thrusters. So when I get into this thing, I hit space to go up. It's really quick, which is a little bit much. Left and right is quite slow. Forward and backwards is also quite slow. I think most of the weight is from the two large thrusters over there. But for the most part, it works okay for now. We're, we're probably going to fine tune it a little bit in the front so that it's a little bit more forward. So it'll be easier to aim. Uh, and I might need to add a camera and everything like that. But it did help weld up our main attraction today, which is the Rail Rider version 2 at least all right so other than that in the previous episode we move this whole drilling system a little bit towards our base here that we could get more of the iron right there and you see it, it dug all the way to its maximum point with the down pistons and it's gotten a lot of the iron but it looks like we still got a lot of iron right here so i think i'm gonna have to remake my little small drill machines and drone to get these things drill, drilled out and drop it right there to collect all the iron and everything like that so we kind of have like two rounded drill spots right here and the craziest thing is that we did use up all the stone all the iron for our rail system towards the end so we got pretty far uh, about looks like 8.2k away which is not too bad, but it's actually not that far either. <laughs> so still long, long ways to go. And we don't have much items left in our production. So we queued up a whole bunch once again. About 20k worth. I think I need to figure out a system to keep queuing as much as possible. But the iron, right now we got some. But we got up to about 12k of iron left at one point. Which is very recent. It looks like we're doing some refining for stone and then some iron as well. And then we'll have a production for the long haul for the current episode. And of course, main attraction for a previous episode was kind of the impractical welder. But we also have or, or attempted to make a rail rider out of wheels, which was a bad idea. Could have just went with hover engines to begin with. But this thing was to kind of stick on the rail with the wheels on the side here and hug it but I believe if I remember correctly putting it like this creates some reverse rotations or reverse propulsion for wheels I forget which one it is exactly I have to lift it up to really see but that's how it came off of the track system or the rail system because some of them are rotating counterclockwise which is the correct way and some of them are rotating clockwise which is the incorrect way or 
vice versa, depending on which direction we're looking at. So this one should have went clockwise. This one should have went counterclockwise. But I think this one was going counterclockwise or clockwise, and this was going clockwise, and it just forced it off the rail. And it fell and dangled on the ledge here, as you saw, which was pretty funny. So luckily, that didn't fall and break, which is a good sign. And of course, I gently put it down eventually. I left it here for fun. I mean, I could still bring it back up and fix it if I wanted to. So an idea for later. This system here uses a lot less batteries than version 2, but version 2 is much, much funner. All right, so of course, the main attraction for today's episode is the Hover Engines Rail Rider. So the Rail Rider, and because we call it Rail Rider, we added this piece right here, kind of Knight Rider-esque thing here <laughs> with the intervals for blinking. Um, if you're curious on how I did that and the blinking, I, I showcased it in Surviving a Trader on the landing pad, but I'll show you right here. So offset light one, two, three, four, five is the front ones. And here you have um, one as blink interval, one second, blink left 20%, and blink offset at zero. And then light two goes to blink 1%, blink offset 20, which is the same. These are the same. And then blink offset changes to 10%. So you just increase the blink offset to make that work. So it went from 0 to 10. The next one would be 20, 30, 40, or I think I actually messed it up a little bit. Yeah. I went from 0 to 10 to 15 to 20 and 25, which should be 0.5 increments. So I'll just do 0.5 right here. That should fix the front. But very negligible right there, but it'd be better now. Right there. Yep. <laughs> I wish that actually light up itself, not just be a light, but this works okay. It's not too bad. All right, so yeah. So this thing is made of two batteries. We got a gyroscope with override, which I think I could turn it off by the two bar, but it didn't seem like it's really turning it off for some odd reason. So I got to kind of figure what that's all about. I mean, maybe we just turn it on and off instead of all right on and off because when I turn it off it's still showing blue and if I'm looking at the gyroscope oh it is off okay so why is it always on blue that's pretty interesting okay yeah two batteries which recharge pretty quickly but it looks like we killed a lot of batteries also flying it uh, we got the solar panels the triangular ones so we can get some sort of power back but of course it's not enough to recharge while we're actually just idled like this so eventually we do have to drop it to get charged or I have to make some kind of connection system but of course large grid to small grid connection system has been a poor idea in recent times so I'm not gonna do that anytime soon but yeah we are we do lose power fairly quickly on this thing because we have two small thrusters on each side forward and backwards so two forwards two backwards right along the rail part right here we have six on both sides of the fan version atmospheric thrusters because we needed to kind of keep it on the sides a little bit not necessary but it, it did cause a bit of an issue at one point where we kind of flew up and broke it while we were fixing this thing because initially it kind of made this thing a little bit uneven somehow <laughs> so we had to fix that we didn't count it correctly that so we had one block off but now we're even so that worked out okay but when I did that it flipped it out and rail a little bit so I had to build the side rails I think I can turn that take it off now and it should be okay but I left it on just in case which is not too bad it's not it's not a big deal it is going to run the batteries a little bit but other than that it have hover engines all over this thing so on the bottom of right here you got four right here, one here, one there, three and four. There's five all the way up front right here on this piece. And one more, which is right underneath the saddle, basically. Right there. So a little too much, but it's decent. And I added these wheels here only so that when we do plan to kind of drop it, 
so we could get some energy back from the solar panels because right now the current batteries let's say right here fully depletes in two hours and you'll see the numbers twitching a little bit which isn't too too bad two hours is great by the way so even better so when we take off dampeners we'll drop a little bit in the bottom of the craft itself or ship uh, was taking most of the damage when I dropped the dampeners or turned off dampeners but eventually sometimes these hover engines do take the damage too <laughs> and it eventually breaks so that's why I added those wheels just in case for now I mean it, it does make it look awful but it's not too bad and for some reason when I was closer to the welding machine all the way in the top or AKOA um, it started slipping down a little bit, so I had to change the wheel settings with the friction a little bit higher than zero. So it's at 25% in this case. But other than that, flying, because I think we're, we're a bit of a diagonal when we get up there to the top. Flying back was a bit of a problem because it was lifting up a little bit from the back for some reason. And I had to make sure uh, the gyroscope's override was on correctly in order for that to kind of work out right. So turning off, turning on dampeners now, it's it's a little dangerous. Okay, now we are at oh, the gyroscope piece. There we go. So damper is off, damper is on. The so right now flies up slightly, which is not too bad. And if you want to look at the hover engines, all of them are set the same, which I could change them if I want to separately. I have altitude minimum at one meter, altitude rain at one meter, altitude regulation distance at one point five. So that's my settings for the hover engines and it's kind of kept it on track for the most part and if i moved it a little bit it'll fix itself as you see there but of course uh, once we're ready and set to go we would turn off or turn on gyroscope override so we can stay on the track a little bit better but because we don't have a hover engine towards the bottom which we could probably add on the left hand side if we really really want to get glued onto it without flying off every time I turn on and off the dampeners. Um, that could be doable. But with gyroscope override, I'm able to fly and keep going this way without coming off the tracks too much. I mean, you eventually do come off the track just a tiny bit. But once you start slowing down, you come back down. So not, I think it's only because we're slightly at an angle. Yeah, it looks like we are slightly at angle so when that happens we just gotta fix the gyroscope override a little bit and it's at no settings on it it's just on but eventually we do fly off a little bit so we just gotta turn it on and off a little bit which is a bit of a pain but it's not too bad all right so maybe flying it Forward, turning it off works fine and great, as you see there. But then when I fly backwards, maybe I was wrong, but when I fly backwards, I started flying upwards a lot. Yeah, see, I'm flying upwards a lot because we're, we're at a diagonal, so we got to slow down a little bit. So for the hover engines to kind of drop us a bit more, Oop, we are flying way off now. So that's the problem with that. But if we did hover override on it kind of fixes it a little bit or it makes it easier to fly down this thing here and then we if we slow down it will slowly drop as well so yeah that's the biggest problem I seem to have with the hover engines because it's open towards the bottom it's not kind of glued on as I would do with the elevator itself or the monorail elevator whatever you want to call it at this point it's going to be surrounded on all four sides of the rail this one's only covered by three sides of the rail. So I might loop one on the right hand side. Hopefully we could do it that way to kind of glue it on. But right now it was just an experiment to see how well this works. This thing turned out pretty good looking as well. Oh, this is not good. I'm about to hit that. Well, there goes our fun toy. Can't have anything nice.
Okay, so hopefully my voice comes back very soon. But if you enjoyed this episode, this time lapse, don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.